Can you see my cool coffee cup to match today's theme? An excellent choice. I have to figure out why my camera is backwards. It's really annoying. What's weird is it's it's facing the correct direction on Discord. Like, I can see you correctly. Oh, on my Discord, it's still backwards. I wonder, can I be... Weird. Weird. Oh, gosh. Can I do this? Can I transform it? Can I, I to open flip up it? your Twitch channel. Ah! Well, now it's fucked up, but <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. No big deal. Why am I getting an ad? Why am I not sub, -sub to you anymore? <laughs> That's weird. Yeah, because my wife hates me. What are you on? I'm on Twitch. That's what I'm talking about. But it's... Unsubscribe to me on Twitch. How dare you? I didn't. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Which decided to unsubscribe for me. I'm not cool. It's fine. It's Aren't you? Good. I think you have a sub. You're subbed to me. So it's weird that it would. It's yeah. cool. It just doesn't like me. That's fine. I'm subbed again. What up? What Double up? Double subs. Oh. I'm pretty sure Chase and Cat made your shirt. Did they give that to you yet? They have not yet. Okay. Also, I, I noticed the cameras are... Wee bit wonky, Jen. I know. <laughs> I just flip it back. It fucked it no, up. No, no, I meant, like, if you look at, like, you can see, like, part of my I know. Couch it happened is... <laughs> when I flipped it. And see, now it's fine. Yeah, just put it back. I'm just, just backwards. Back. Sorry, guys. Yep. If you ask backwards me, my Jen. shit's backwards. Backwards Jen is the best, Jen. That... Waffle stuff you made was really good. Oh, wassail. Was <laughs> I? I would stoop waffle <laughs> something. Wassail, yeah. So I just resubbed, and now it's telling me it's my three month sub anniversary. So which is it, Twitch? I don't know. Was I subbed or not? It's a bear. Rawr. Jeff, we got to start doing matching outfits. We got to get you a I, bear you know, suit. No, I, I got to get a bear costume. Yeah. Good game, Grizz. I, I should mean, already own one. You should, I really should definitely own a bear costume. Let me pop out this chat. Hi, yeah. Sigma Bat. The Chase Lemon. He's got the big grizzly beard. Very I do. Nice. Very grizzly which is, beard. Which is where the nickname came from. <laughs> you need uh, ears. Just get some little ears. <laughs> Hi, Painted Dreams. First time chat. Hello. We are actually going to start the show off talking about C2E2. <gasps> How exciting. It was really What's, good. What, what is this show, Jen? C2E2 is oh, the... Oh, not that. This show uh, that people are watching. Oh, if you ask me. Oh, wait. No. Oh, if you ask me. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> no. I just... <laughs> It's not good. I gotta practice. I need to yeah, find my own is, voice. You if know? you ask me, where we ask Jen and me vicariously as well about our thoughts on various things, and uh, you know, that's and then we, we're going to talk about it. We're just two friends hanging out talking about all the stuff we've been watching recently, two and friends. reading in some cases. Yes, I read a book. Can you believe it? I mean, yes. I I if you had told me that you knew how to read, I would have believed you. <laughs> well, I guess that's good. Thanks for believing in me, Jeff. Whoa, Jen, you want to become famous? I can buy followers. Does that make you, you famous? <laughs> if you that buy makes money. You famous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't know what a prime is. What is that? Uh, I assume that's like the prime subscriptions. Uh oh. Like subscribing with your Amazon Prime. I don't know. Yeah. But that—that's what it takes to become famous. Well, give me money so I can become famous. Am I a mod? Oh yeah, I don't think you're a mod. I should mod I would you. I would, I would remove that guy if I was a mod. Can I do that from here? <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> well, so yeah, that's the show. We're, we're, it's uh, just us talking about stuff. And so since Painted Dreams oh, already brought it up, Jen, how was C2E2? 
it was great. I had a really good time. I was really nervous, if you've been seeing my posts, that I was nervous that the weather was going to be really terrible, but it actually wasn't bad. It hardly rained. It was cold, but I had a big jacket, and that kept me very warm. I had gloves and a hat, and that was good enough. So I got to walk around downtown without dying, so it was Really good. And then the convention was awesome. Got to wear three costumes. Um, Amanda Connor and Jimmy Palmiotti were there. So I wore their Harley Quinn. And then I wore my new 1887 Dark Phoenix. And then I wore Painkiller Jane on Sunday. And it was just really cool getting to talk to people. And they would like, hey, it's Bobby B. We were talking at Chicago. Hello, Bobby. We're talking about Chicago right now. Anyways, like I was saying, it was really cool seeing people that... I have met, they would show me the pictures. Oh my God, I remember like four years ago when you were dressed as Supergirl and I took a picture with you. So that was really cool. And then I met like a lot of new people. I got to meet people like Bobby B that hang out with us on Twitch. And it was really cool. My, my booth was very professional. I got brand new banners and stuff. I had my shirts there. So it was really cool. And, I, and Mary was with you? And Mary came with me. Yes, Evan and Mary came. So Evan helped me set up the whole booth. It still took us like four hours. But then Mary came and she helped work with my booth all weekend. I would have died without her. And like she really came through for the team. She was great. She, you know, she's like the nicest person ever. So really and then she like was talk. She didn't know anything about comic books or anything. And she was worried people were going to call her a poser every single time. She saw anyone with a blonde wig and pink dress. She's like, oh my God, is that Princess Peach? And twice it was Aurora, the Disney princess. And I was like, no, just because she's wearing a pink dress, blonde hair. But eventually she got there. Uh, the most popular costume of the weekend was all from Demon Slayer. And so eventually Makes I, sense. she could eventually point out all the Demon Slayer costumes. So she learned some things. Have you done a Demon Slayer costume yet? I haven't. Um, I don't know. My problem with like stuff like that is I really enjoy the show. Yeah. But people have cosplayed those characters like perfectly. To death. But like, per <laughs> but they're perfect. I mean, I can't do it any better. And I mean, not and not just the costume. Like some of the photography that people have done and the edits and just like beautiful artwork. And I know that I can't do better because it's already perfect so kind of like takes all the fun out of it could you do like a lesser known character or like a really obscure character i mean i definitely could do a twist like a how i do all my victorian stuff maybe come yeah. up with some other way to do that but i haven't really thought about it. i haven't watched the new season yet i haven't watched it at all i only i read the the manga uh, oh, yeah. So I don't know how far they are in the show. Otherwise, I would throw out some suggestions. Does Spider Babies mean anything to you? Uh, I think that is a no. <laughs> I don't remember. I watched it when it came out, and then I haven't watched it since. And I have a terrible memory, so I really have to rewatch it before I watch the new season. So, but I get to live it all for the first time once again. It's great. Yeah, sometimes I'm envious of your horrible memory yeah. because it's like every time you're watching something, it's like it's for the first time again. Yes, it's and really And I would wonderful. give anything to be able to experience some of my favorite movies for the first time again. Yeah. Okay, what's a movie <laughs> that you wish you could experience for the first time? Star Wars. Oh, uh, you know, I saw Star Wars for the first time at your house. I had never seen mm -hmm. it before, and we watched Star Wars together, so that was a good experience. I really enjoyed yeah. that. Yeah. Well, I just, like, for me... I don't remember a time having not seen Star Wars because, like, my brother and I were all, like, already watching it when my memories were, you know, first forming, right? So my entire life I've been watching Star Wars. And so I don't actually know what my first experience with Star Wars was because, you know, it happened before I was you know, forming actual memories. So it would be cool to actually experience it for the first time and then remember that experience. Yeah, because it's, like, your favorite thing in the whole world. So. It's among my favorite thing in the whole world. Yeah. I mean. Right there. Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> I think I go somewhere. Oh. Oh, no. No. <laughs> Fuck! This picture! <laughs>
That's Scorpius by Chad Harden. It's like one of my favorite art pieces that I have. Just wanted Excellent to point artist, that out. for sure. Great artist. Um, okay, so want to start talking about our stuff? Let's do it. What, what are we going to kick it off with? Okay, well, on the last show, we started it off talking about our favorite Christmas movies. And we found out I have never seen Die Hard. And so, we were all clutching our pearls in shock that you had not seen Die Hard. <laughs> Hi, Joel. So we're going to talk about Die Hard. Look at, so, look at that badass right there. Just look at him. I, I'm a big Bruce Willis fan. Big, big Bruce Willis fan. And he is at his most Bruce Willisy in the first Die Hard movie. Yes, so. for sure. Yeah. I definitely enjoyed it. It was... Hi, Joel. All right, so uh, it is a Christmas movie. It's a, it, so we are in, in agreement, this is a Christmas movie. It happens, like, on Christmas. So it is definitely... Wait, is it on Christmas? Because it's like a Christmas It's, it's Christmas Eve. Christmas Eve. Okay, so that counts. Definitely. Yeah. I'm sure it went past midnight and eventually went oh, into definitely. Christmas Day, so... Yeah, so um, people love to debate this because it's like, well, it's an action movie, so how can it be a Christmas movie? And I say that the genre has nothing to do with whether or not it is a Christmas movie. It's all about does it happen at Christmas, and does the fact that it's happening at Christmas affect the storyline? So yes, it does, so therefore it's a Christmas movie. Well, Put just because it's down. at a Christmas party? Is that why? Well, yeah, so that the whole impetus for him being in town is Christmas. So like, you know, he he's there to for to be with his family for Christmas and he's going to this Christmas party. And uh, you know, the whole reason everyone is in the building for this attack to take place is Christmas. He uh says ho ho ho. Oh, yeah. Can't you know, now I have a machine that. gun. Ho ho ho. <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Definitely a Christmas movie. Good point. Christmas movie. The police officer is singing a Christmas song fact <laughs> i mean you can't debate that that's so there it is but the more important question jen yes uh, if someone were to ask you did you like die hard did you like die hard it was okay i will be the first person to admit i'm not really an action movie kind of person i think the only movies genre that i don't like more is probably like um, like war movies, not really like a war movie fan. So yeah, action movies, definitely one of my least favorite uh, genres. So I'm not saying it was a bad movie, but it was fine. It, it so was... Considering it's a genre that you're not usually a fan of, the fact that you even remotely enjoyed it is probably a good sign for this movie overall, right? Yeah, I like, I kind of like the humor. I mean, he did kind of have like a potty mouth that seemed like a little exaggerated at times, but I did enjoy his bare feet and then them like randomly showing his bare feet. I don't know. I thought that was really funny. But I would like to say one thing. I then, everybody said, okay, Die Hard's good, but have you seen Die Hard 3? So I was like, well, I thought the first one was like, okay, but I watched the third one. It was awesome. Did Evan, did Evan yes. really want to watch Die Hard 3? No, I wanted to, he told me Die Hard 3 was great. And then I saw a lot of people posting about it, like on Twitter and stuff. Somebody else was talking about movies, like trilogies or movies that have sequels and which movies did not need a sequel. And some people said Die Hard, but then everybody else was like, but then you wouldn't have Die Hard 3. So a lot of people were talking about Die Hard 3 all at the same time, and I really liked it. It was awesome. Definitely way better than the first one. Wow. Yeah, yeah. she skipped over Die Hard 2. Yeah. I, I went ahead and, and when she told me she was going to watch Die Hard 3, I was like, well, I'm going to watch both, Die Hard 2 and 3. Well, how do you uh, feel about 2? Uh, 2 is, is is fine. The plot really gets away from itself on that <laughs> one. Like, it is nonsense, Jen. And, like, you know, I'm I'm pretty forgiving about that stuff, like, especially in action movies. But even I'm like, a lot of these problems could have been solved if anyone had just stopped and thought for like a second. <laughs> <laughs> but they did that well in the third one. There was they did that a really lot... well in the third yeah. one. Yeah. Um, unpopular Pit, third one is the best one. Avenging Unicorns knows. 
Third one's the best one. I really liked it. Even for, for an action movie, it still was like, first of all, the action was great. I love the parts where um, they're in the train station and the train goes off the rails. That just yep, looks awesome. Yep, and nearly squashes them. That's awesome. Yeah, and then in the tunnel, he's driving the truck and all the water is coming behind him. That looks really cool. And then the car chase where they're trying to get away from the bad guys and he spins the car and shoots the gun and it like flips over. Really cool. The action scenes are really want, great. I do want to answer Painted Dream's question from up above. Uh can can they use the same argument for Mean Girls to be a Christmas movie? I would say yes. The the, the whole Christmas song is you know song and you know is a big plot device in, in the middle of the movie. So I, I would argue that you could you could do that. Uh, I'm less confident that Mean Girls is a Christmas movie than I am Die Hard as a Christmas movie. <laughs> I haven't seen Mean Girls since I don't even know when. I don't. I remember the dance because lots of people like to do that dance and they remember they were really slutty and i thought that was really weird for them being in high school but yeah but that um, was kind of the point yeah under <laughs> underage sexy people i don't know it kind of makes me uncomfortable so what i wanted to say regarding the all the action how great the action was in, in die hard with a vengeance versus die hard one and even die hard two for that matter the budget was significantly higher for die hard with a vengeance budget yeah. was 90 uh 90 million dollars for Die Hard with a Vengeance and only twenty eight million for Die Hard. Oh wow! Okay. So that's why they were able to blow so much stuff up and have that train crashing through the station and and then the car you know, coming off the bridge into the water. Yeah. I mean, there they, was a lot of stuff in there. They're like, dang, did they really do that. Like, and it is kind of crazy because a lot of those sort of like really big moments would be like the climax. Like, say, for a climax in other action Yeah, movies. it was the whole movie. There was, like, high-impact drama, like, intense, really cool effects and everything. I really, I thought it was great. And I loved um, Samuel L. Jackson and Bruce Willis, like, dynamic. I thought they worked yep. really, really well together. And my biggest thing is, like, the dialogue seemed so natural. It didn't really seem like a script. It really did seem like just, like, a normal conversation, even the villain, he was very nonchalant, well, it, and it would just seem so organic. It helps that Samuel L. Jackson, you know, that that is similar to a lot of other roles he's already played he at that himself. point. Yeah. Well, and, and yeah, I don't want to say that he just plays himself because he really like he, he doesn't just play himself, but he does play that a version of that character a lot. Well, <laughs> that's why Unbreakable is one of my favorite movies of all time. You're a big fan of Mr. Glass? I'm a big fan of Mr. Glass. He is definitely one of my favorite villains in anything ever. And Bruce Willis, okay, so that big... That, that might have been... No, I think Sixth Sense was my first Bruce Willis movie, but that one's definitely my second, I think. I've never seen, like, what, Lethal Weapon is the other one he's in? No, no, Lethal Weapon is uh, Mel Gibson. Oh, well, what am I thinking of? Uh, with, Red? With... <laughs> Not Dwayne Johnson. Um, you know. He's been I, in a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah. I had it earlier. I was looking it up earlier, and now I don't remember. But anyways, um, Damon Wayans. There you go. Um, but yeah, I liked Die Hard also, And you liked him in uh, Pulp Fiction as oh, well. Oh, of I'm course. Sure. Yes, absolutely. Love, love him in Pulp Fiction. Avenging Unicorn says Alan Rickman and Jeremy Irons are the best villains. They really do play excellent villains. And yeah. I think the best part about Hans Gruber and uh, Simon in Die Hard with a Vengeance is that they are not comical. Villains yeah. in action movies can get really silly a lot. And that and that's a big problem I have with uh, Die Hard 2 is that the, the whole villain arc is like, what is, what is happening here? This is... This is comic book nonsense. <laughs> yeah, they're not like overly evil or like maniacal or I love the riddle stuff. I thought that was really cool. Um, yeah, and okay, I will. Okay, there is like one woman in the whole Die Hard 3. And my favorite part about her is that she does not have a single word of dialogue the whole movie. But she still comes off as such a badass. <laughs> like, it's just, I think it's the way she walks. I don't know. But I thought that was really cool. I just find it interesting that somebody doesn't even have to talk. And 
she seems like like really has, cool has, character. seems like a cool character it's just like i mean that's tough to pull saying, off for yeah sure. for sure she's got the face i think it's the lock though that's true. She and and I when at first when you said there's only one woman character, I I there's also the woman police officer who does oh. talk a little bit, but she's always very much like, "Oh, sir, we got to do." Yeah, something. Oh. lame. I guess she's yeah. not great. I didn't even but then, consider then that. I remember the the villain woman. Yes. Like, yeah, yeah, you're right. That she's really yeah. good, menacing. I did not uh, even consider really that. good with a really good with a knife. <laughs> uh, not so good at driving a helicopter though. Not great at the <laughs> helicopter driving. But, you know, that's tough to do. You know, she has a lot of skills. Helicopter pilot is not her strongest. And I think we can forgive her for that. Well, uh, that's kind of how they died. So I don't think yeah, she Yeah, I didn't say for... Simon could forgive her for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so I see we have another question. Is Iron Man 3 a Christmas movie? Uh, did you ever make it to Iron Man 3 in your MCU watches, Jen? Yeah, I, st- I th- saw that in theaters. That might have been one of the last one of the last ones you ones saw i saw it was terrible and i don't I think remember. the last one you saw in theaters was uh, age of ultron right so that would age of ultron was after iron man 3 i did see guardians of the galaxy no but, uh, i had to watch didn't i didn't you guys make me watch one oh, i made you watch black widow yeah for, uh, okay, uh, yeah pop xp yeah They're 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 big movies, Jen. People want to talk about them. <laughs> well, let's just assume I hate it. How about that? <laughs> well, okay. So the question is: Iron is Iron Man three a Christmas movie? It sounds like you don't really remember it that well. I don't remember anything about it. But uh, Shane Black was the director for Iron Man three, and also the director for Lethal Weapon, uh, uh, which is a fun little you know connection from earlier. Well, somebody but, had uh, told me on Instagram that all of his movies happen during Christmas. Correct. That is yeah. a big. That's something that Shane Black does on purpose: is sets all his movies at Christmas. Uh, and you know, tries to work it in in some way that is so it's not necessarily all about Christmas, but is Christmas adjacent. Uh, and so I, I think Iron Man three would also qualify as a Christmas movie. Why does he do that? Sorry. Why does he do that? Has he ever come out and said? Uh, I, I'm sure he has. I, I didn't read enough into it to to find out. I just you know some directors like to have a, a you know a signature thing, right? And yeah. Quentin Tarantino likes feet. This guy likes Christmas, you know? Well, then he really <laughs> must like Die Hard if he likes feet. Yeah, I, I, I guarantee that uh, Quentin Tarantino is big fan. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, holiday film because it takes place in the beginning of New Year's and then, yeah. and That's true. I can see that argument as well uh, that uh, it, because it takes place around Christmas but not really on Christmas Day. But uh, there's all the decorations. The whole town is set up for Christmas. The little boy is, uh, you know, you know, all excited for gifts on Christmas. You know, right? Uh, from the man in the red suit, which was, you know, so I, I, I don't know. There's, there's enough there for me. Yeah, the beginning of the movie is a flashback celebrating New Year's Eve, and and then Tony's a jerk because he's drunk. I don't know if Tarantino's a fan of 80s. When I say I guarantee, I just meant because There's Bruce feet. Willis's feet are exposed for the vast majority of the movie and Quentin Tarantino likes feet. <laughs> Can you imagine being Bruce Willis, though, and, like, in that set having to run around barefoot? I don't know about that. Did they have, like, fake feet? I heard sometimes they do, like, little fake feet. I think they did because he spends a good portion of the movie with glass in the yeah. bottom of his feet, and so there's no way he was, you know... Like, there was definitely something going on there. <laughs> I don't know. He seems like a tough guy. The other thing, though, was, like, it more annoying to me than being barefoot for the entire time fil- filming a movie would be being barefoot but having fake blood on the bottom of my feet it's very for the sticky. entire movie. Because it's sticky it's or sticky. slippery and, you know. It's not no, slippery. You. It's just sticky. It's very sticky. It looks like he slips on it a couple of times. Oh, really? I wonder what yeah. they use. Because I use stage blood. And it's very viscous and yeah. sticky. And it stains, too. Sometimes you keep, keep the red on your face. Yeah, so Die Hard with a Vengeance you liked better than Die Hard. I yes. can see that argument. I gave them uh, both. Actually, no, I gave Die Hard four and a half stars, and I gave Die Hard with a Vengeance four stars. We do out of ten. We do out of ten okay. here. Okay, well, so, you know, nine and eight. <laughs> oh, okay. I think I would get, if you ask me... I would give the first Die Hard 
I don't know, like a six. But that's personal opinion. I think it could be rated higher. I just not really my kind of movie. So I'm saying I didn't really necessarily enjoy it. So I think if it was anybody else, probably like an eight. And then, I, but I give it, what I say, a six. But Die Hard with a Vengeance, I'm going to give it a nine. Like, I thought it was great. Wow. Yeah, for an, it impressed me for an action movie because the well, I, action was like, it was amazing. It was very realistic and the, the villain was great. I mean. And it I, wasn't all just action uh, for the sake of action. It's a consequence of the the mystery that's being solved, the detective work that's going on. Uh, so, yeah, I can see that completely. That's yeah. I, I can see why you would like that one better than other action movies. Yeah. Uh, but uh, so we have uh, the explanation in our chat. Uh, Bruce Bills didn't actually walk barefoot through the filming of Die Hard. Look closely at many of the scenes. You might notice that Willis's feet look larger than normal. This was due to him wearing special shoes molded from his own feet to give a semi-authentic look. I want some of those. <laughs> you want some Bruce Willis feet? <laughs> I bet he could put those on eBay. Man, people would buy those up. Get some real... Quentin Tarantino would be first in line. Yeah, and we definitely can't give enough credit to Samuel L. Jackson yeah. uh, for Die Hard with a Vengeance because he really does elevate that movie Yeah, a lot. Yeah. It is always funny to me, the, like, stereotype of just, like, I'm a normal guy, but I'm going to follow this badass and do other badass things that I've never done any time in my life, and I'm going to survive. I mean, I feel like that was me. I definitely would have died. Like, oh, for, for sure. sure. I definitely would Yeah, died. I would have died, you know, right away. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I never get put in that position because. Well, and my favorite part about it was like, you could like they have to kind of hand wave a little bit because like why on earth would this civilian be involved? But they're like, well, the bad guy says he has to. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, now, <laughs> so but, now he is. <laughs> but it is like because I think because of the riddles and stuff, you can kind of just see that he's like, oh, this would make it harder. All right, now you're involved. You have to do all yeah. this stuff too. So it actually, it was kind of ridiculous, but I think it made sense with the villain. It sounds like I something that I he would actually do. Yeah. Especially so. since that whole thing is about extending the time for his plan. So like, yeah, let's throw another wrinkle in. Why not? Yeah. Now you have to carry that guy with you. And it turns out, of course, that he's very helpful and way smarter than John McClane. Yes, I did enjoy that. <laughs> Though my thing with... The whole, they're handcuffed to that pole, and then suddenly Bruce Willis has a thing to, like, pick the lock, and then he drops it, because they're, like, handcuffed back to back, right. and he drops it, and Samuel L. Jackson catches it, and then with behind his back, unlocks the, lock. the handcuffs, and because, of course, he can pick locks. I don't know. That well, they established earlier that he's also a locksmith. How convenient. Yeah, I mean, he's just a really smart guy, you know? Yeah. Very talented. That's my one complaint. That's why I didn't get a 10. That That's why it doesn't get a 10. That was that, my that one was complaint. unbelievable. That, yeah. Out of the whole movie, <laughs> that was the one unbelievable part to me. But the biggest issue for me with Die Hard with a Vengeance is that it's not a Christmas movie. <laughs> yeah, but I was on the Die Hard train. I heard you yeah. don't watch any more than that. You don't need to see any of the other ones. Well, you know, we've had some other people in chat say that they they liked the fourth one a lot. Uh, oh, really? So, so I mean, maybe uh, I've never I've never given the, any of the other ones after three a shot. Uh, but uh, I'm not opposed to it. I, I mean, I'll watch bad movies. Jen doesn't have the time to waste watching bad movies, but I'll do it from time to time. <laughs> uh, so, did you have anything else you wanted to say on Die Hard? No, that was it. I think we covered that pretty good. Okay. Yeah, definitely gave it a well. First one's a six. Second, third one's a nine. I didn't see. I didn't see two. Skip two. Ever since I first learned that it was supposed to be a Lethal Weapon movie, first it makes a lot more sense. I mean, yeah, uh, that would make sense for Die Hard with a Vengeance to be a Lethal Weapon movie because the buddy cop scenario. That's that's what all the Lethal Weapon franchise is about. Is it's a buddy cop franchise. Never seen it. They're not... not as good, but they're still pretty good. <laughs> Kate Beckinsale's hot. I didn't know she was in the fourth one. I know. How long is this cameo? That that <laughs> that could be a deciding factor on if I watch it or not. <laughs> <laughs> if you pause it, then it can go on forever. Go on forever. I could also just Google images. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure there's a clip of it somewhere. 
Um, but yeah, so the next thing we were going to talk about here today, and it's going to be spoiler free. Oh, spoiler uh, free. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to, well, because you haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. And it also just ended today. We're talking about Hawkeye, the uh, MCU TV show. <laughs> All right. What there do you, we go. I didn't see it. So this is, what do you think, Jeff? So Tell that's what I, I want to share. I don't even know um, what it's about. No idea. So the first thing I wanted to ask was, did you ever read the Matt Fraction run of Hawkeye? I've never read anything Hawkeye. Okay. So by all accounts, that arc is fantastic. Uh, I, I think I read a couple issues of it, and then I stopped collecting Marvel comics other than Star Wars. Thank God I saw it last night. Yeah, well, like, you know, I, I watched it this morning, yeah, and I, I loved it. I, I really did love Hawkeye. This is probably, I think it's my favorite of the MCU TV shows, uh, but I will say that it is very much an MCU thing still, so it's not going to be for Jen. Yeah, okay. <laughs> there's there's a lot of you know quippy humor and stuff like that, but uh, I I thought that uh, this was really fun because it's an opportunity to actually see Clint like get fleshed out a little bit as a character because among all the Avengers, he's definitely got the least amount of time to be explored. And now that we got this you know six episode TV show, this mini series, we actually get to see him become the character that a lot of people who are fans of Hawkeye have been hoping that they would get to see from the beginning. Uh, they We get to learn a lot about some of the other uh, lesser known characters and some of the newer characters that they've introduced into the MCU. Uh, and uh, like, I know a lot of people are going nuts. I'm not, again, I'm not spoiling stuff, but there's, you know, some appearances in this show that everyone's like, what? you know, they're absolutely insane for, some of these surprises, uh, surprise appearances in this show. Uh, and I think the performances are great. I really love Haley Steinfeld as uh, Kate Bishop. Do you know Kate? Do you know anything about Kate Bishop? I know of her, but again, I've never okay. read anything. And in, in terms of comics, I think you'd probably like Kate Bishop's character. Uh, so you should, like, I, re I think you might want to read the Matt Fraction story arc. Uh, that run of Hawkeye because I think you actually probably would enjoy that uh, this show is great because it's more about uh, a personal like the stakes are much lower this isn't a cataclysmic universe ending event oh good it's not, okay. it's not just crazy insane it's personal uh, I'll, I'll, I can give you a little bit like uh, you're, do you know who Ronan is? yeah okay so the the in the setup is that uh, the Ronin costume and weapon the, and sword is being sold at a black market auction. And then uh, Kate Bishop accidentally ends up wearing this costume when something goes crazy at the at the event. And so now people think Ronin is back. And Hawkeye wants Ronin to very much be left in the past. So he that's what brings him and Kate Bishop together early on. He doesn't Clint doesn't go through one of the name slash costume changes. In the yeah, and 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 Joel says Haley Steinfeld was perfect cast as Kate Bishop, and I agree. I think that she was absolutely perfect for that. My only negative for Haley Steinfeld being Kate Bishop is that she can't also be Spider Gwen if they ever do live action. <laughs> you you think uh, she would be a good Spider Gwen? I well, she's already voiced her in uh, oh. uh, Spider Verse. Oh, so. okay. So I thought that would be a, a fun transition if they ever do bring those together. But... Uh, Did you need not... to have seen the other Marvel movies to understand Hawkeye? Um, you would probably need to have seen at least Infinity War. Haven't and seen that's it. basically it. Oh, really? So yeah, does it take place and... after that? Yes, it does. Yeah, so this this takes place after... after it takes place after Endgame. Uh, and it is a, it's again, it's a Christmas thing, which I, I love that, you know, the whole, the whole time Clint's just trying to get this problem resolved so he can get home to his family for Christmas. Ugh, gross. <laughs> oh, family. <laughs> God, I hate family so much. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I mean, it's not like he's, it's not like he repeats it every five seconds or that. It's just like, you know, each episode you get a little, little touch of like the holidays affecting, you know, what's going on around them. Uh, I think it's really fun. The action's really cool. Uh, and like I said, the lower stakes 
makes this feel much more like like a Daredevil. I don't know. Did you watch any of the Daredevil yeah. TV show? Yeah. It, it, it kind of brings it down to like those level stakes, which is much more believable and much more relatable. Yeah. Even like, even, I mean, as relatable as a guy, you know, fighting armies off with bow and arrow can be relatable. But <laughs> how is it um, like Daredevil or the Punisher, where it's kind of just like street level, not street level thugs, but like just kind of normal or kind of like Black yeah. Widow, where they have all the crazy uh, ships and like suits of armor. No, it's it's like definitely that. much more street level. Uh, like the craziest stuff is all of Hawkeye's uh, arrows. Yeah. Which I mean, that's straight out of the comics. Yeah. That he has some crazy arrows, so that's that's as crazy as the tech gets. I think my for... only experience with Hawkeye is uh, Marvel vs. Capcom. I think that's, yes, and that's he about is. It. He's one of my favorite characters to play as in Marvel vs. Capcom, but also one of the most annoying characters to play against. Yeah. <laughs> He does the spinning bow <laughs> attack. Do you remember? You know what I'm talking about? I don't know. I don't remember which combo it is, but he basically spins the bow, but he has like blades on his bow, and I would just spam that whenever people were getting too close to me. The, the spammers. The spammers. I am a spammer. I'm not spammer. good at fighting games. I'm not either. I'm not I, good but at I, games. I don't spam. <laughs> I just button smash and just hope, and it usually works out, especially when you play. Um, like Felicia is a good button smasher. What's the dog? Amaterasuo. I can never say his name right. But Matarasu. Perfect button smasher characters. Yep. Excellent. <laughs> uh, so we have Sigmabat in chat says he took the mantle of Goliath slash Giant Man while Hank Pym was unavailable, at least until he runs out of Pym particles. That's true. I remember that from the comics. Uh, and yeah, he hasn't done that yet. <laughs> Who knows if he ever will? Highly unlikely since we already jumped straight ahead to Scott Lang as Ant Man, but uh, and then Joel again says I, I really enjoyed her character very much, and I must say this goes Shang Chi movie as well. MCU does an amazing does an amazing job introducing a Marvel character I have never seen. Thor, Hawkeye, Guardians, Black Panther, etc., and they have never failed for me liking a top Marvel character. See, we're we're of the same mind here. You're both Jen is so not. wrong, <laughs> just so wrong. What's funny is. Uh, our friend Evan, huge Captain America fan prior to the MCU. <laughs> yeah, but Evan is worse than me. He doesn't like things because they're popular. So he just, he still likes the first movie, but. Which makes sense because it's everyone's least favorite Captain America movie. So because it's the least popular Captain America movie, it's great for Evan. <laughs> really? I like it. I think it's great. I like it too. I but again, watched it recently. I thought it, it was great. It's a good movie, but most people prefer Winter Soldier or uh, Civil War. Civil War. Don't even get me started on Civil War. You're just mad because it wasn't anything like the actual Civil War. Oh, wow. Part. I didn't like something because it wasn't anything <laughs> like the original source material. That was amazing. Wow. Can't even. Can't believe that. Yeah, but it's a different universe. So, you know, just approach it like it's something new. Winter Soldier is one of my favorites. I love Winter Soldier. Wait, and obviously... Darkness says you don't like the first Captain America or Civil War. Can't, how do you not like I think it? he said he didn't like the first Captain America. But I do want to point out, it's very obvious I like Civil War. Because I have it here on my wall. Uh, Signed no, by uh, Robert Downey Jr. That's cool. When did you get <laughs> yeah. that? Uh, when uh, Hurricane Harvey uh, hit, there they did a charity... Uh, sale at our local comic shop that I go to. And uh, um, they had a whole bunch of cool stuff that people had donated to sell to help pay uh, for repairs and, you know, lodging and stuff like that for people who had lost their homes during Hurricane Harvey. And this was one of the items on sale. I was like, heck yes, I would love Robert Downey Jr.'s autograph on a, the, a Civil War poster. And it's going to help people in need. Yes, of course, definitely. <laughs> Do you have any plans to get anybody else to sign it? Like go to a convention? Like Chris Seven still. Yeah, that's a good sometime. point. I probably, I should probably consider that. That seems like an expensive endeavor, but. Uh... But then, I mean, have Captain America and Iron Man signature on the Civil War poster. That's true. That's pretty cool. That that's, would be really cool. That's pretty cool. Well, next time Chris Evans is in town, you let me know. <laughs> I think he did Comic Palooza a couple of years ago. I remember Jeremy Renner was there uh, in like 2015 
uh, he it was like four hundred dollars to get his autograph. Really? Yeah. So guess whose autograph I did not get? Yeah. <laughs> That's nuts. That's going to be me one day. That's going to be us one day, Jeff. We're going to become so Twitch famous for our show. If you ask me and everybody's going to want to get our signatures on their posters, we'll have a poster together. We can sign it. $400. That sounds, I mean, that sounds great to me, <laughs> but like I can picture the poster now. It's a huge picture of you <laughs> and then me in the corner. Like, <laughs> no way. We do like a buddy, buddy. No, otherwise, That's how we sell the posters, Jen. You got to be the focus. No, I'll just make my top go really low. <laughs> that's how we'll get that's how we'll get it don't worry that's how we'll do it that's a good strategy we can do you too jeff we can just get you a little zip give down me a nice shirt. Little, yeah a little zip yeah down a little shirt. button up shirt come on just unbutton it a little bit <laughs> give the viewers yep, what they yep. want i mean that's what the people want <laughs> Pick one. Yeah. oh look at that <laughs> sexy man but yeah hawkeye's a, a lot of fun and it is like I said. It is still very much an MCU show, so there is a lot of the humor, and that's the part that I think drives you most crazy, Jen. Is that like you really hate how everybody's so smart alecky all the time? Yeah. And, Which I uh, like smart aleck characters because it's one of those. I'm not. I am not witty enough to be like that person, so I appreciate them. But when every single person in your movie is that way, like every single person, it's not. It doesn't work like that. It's not special. It's not special for everyone. If everyone's clever, no one is clever. So, yeah, I mean, I get that. Uh, so that's why the only reason I would say that you probably still wouldn't enjoy this is because of that. But otherwise, this is probably the closest uh, an MCU show so far would get to something that I think you would actually enjoy. I haven't seen but any for me, of them. Uh, eight, eight out of ten. Eight out of ten. All right, okay. So for reference, what did you give Loki? Loki also got 8 out of 10. Okay, so... But eight. I like this better than Loki. That doesn't make any sense. They they have the same score, but I have to pick which one I like better. Well, then one should be like an 8.2. One should be an well, 8. Because we... Because it's a 10-point scale. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'll let you slide this one time. For the shows, for me, it, uh, I gave 8 out of 10 for... Uh, Hawkeye, Loki, and WandaVision. And then I gave, I think it was six or seven out of 10 for Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, but I, you know, I, I would need to rewatch those because I, I, you know, I, I'm always really high on them when they end, right? And then if I don't think about them for a while, I, uh, I think, you know, maybe I, maybe I overvalued some things, undervalued other things. Uh, as, I see. So nobody's going to talk about Spider Man. No, no Spider Man No Way Home. I've seen it. Uh, I would love to talk about it, but I believe that that might actually be something that uh, Jen sees eventually. Yeah, I haven't seen it, but I also haven't seen any of the Tom Holland Spider Mans, and I haven't seen Endgame. So uh, I don't know if any of that has to do with any of that. But um, I might. Everybody says it's really good. I might actually see it, so I don't want to talk about it. Jesse Dusk says, did you think they were both as good, but you enjoyed one more? I think that's fair to say. They're pretty different uh, in terms of, like, scale and, you know, you know, believability. They're, like, they're, you know, Loki is, you know, time travel and, you, you know, multiversal things, and that, I mean, that's crazy. Uh, Hawkeye is, you know, uh, a mob in tracksuits wants to kill him. <laughs> they're not, they're not the same. <laughs> but they're both pretty. Uh, but the, but they're both they're all very clever. And as far as WandaVision, I really loved the the sitcom shtick of WandaVision because I loved I loved watching old sitcoms when I was a kid. Uh, and so for me, I I really did enjoy that. Even though maybe the the final episode wasn't as good as the final episode of Hawkeye or final episode of Loki was. Uh, but the build up to it for WandaVision was so good that I still really liked that one a lot. I heard, I just saw today that uh, Wanda is going to be in the new Doctor Strange movie. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense with the way WandaVision happened? Is that, you think that's like a continuation of that? It definitely is. That's pretty cool. And we're finally getting a Scarlet Witch that is more close to the Scarlet Witch you know from the comics. Oh, okay. So. I, I appreciate that they're all connected. But I hate them, so it's really hard to get like excited. 
I like the idea, but then I watch it and I just am like, oh, this is the worst. I hate this every time. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing to be done about that at this point, Jen. Mm -hmm. The MCU is what it is, and if you're not a fan now, I don't see it. I don't see them ever making it so that you will be. I'm a lost uh, cause, that's for sure. Well, maybe you're not a lost cause. Maybe they're the lost cause. I right? just have to make my own. I'll just make <laughs> my own superhero movie, and it'll be awesome. So, right, Jeff? We're gonna. That's what. Well, now I'm gonna be in a superhero movie too. <laughs> <laughs> Bear costume. Um, it'll be like that russian action movie where like the bear with the, there's like a bear with a machine gun do you even know what i'm talking about no but that's i don't funny. remember the name of the movie but yeah it, it's it was pretty popular on the internet for a while <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i watch all of i watch all the mcu stuff so you know i'm i'm fully prepared for the next whatever the next mcu thing that comes out i'm always ready but uh the problem is you know there for jen there's some things that she just won't want to watch and you can't really fault her for that. She knows what she likes. <laughs> so I remember at one point, a couple years ago, there was like a map of all of the MCU movies that were going to come out up until mm -hmm. Endgame, Right. Yeah. Have they done that? Like what's the deal with the MCU now that Endgame happened? Like, so that's what they've been setting up with a lot of these TV shows is the next phase of the MCU. And st like since I am avoiding spoilers here, uh, they, the TV shows, and then especially with uh, the way Spider-Man No Way Home ends, uh, they are, they've set up what the rest, what, what the next phase is going to be. And, you know, how do you top Thanos wiping out half of the universe? Well, now they're going into multiverse stuff. So, you know, it gets crazy. And, I'm I'm a little on edge because you, you we've seen what happens when they try to do too much crazy stuff all at once. Uh, so, but fortunately, since they're kind of spreading it out over multiple movies, multiple TV shows, I think it's giving a lot of the fans an opportunity to kind of like wrap their head around the idea. Because like this stuff has been happening in comics for decades, where like people are going through different timelines and different universes and all that stuff. So comic book fans are prepared for that. But if you're just a, a casual viewer who just likes watching the MCU movies, this multiverse stuff is going to be a little crazy. So I think the the slower burn for that is going to help them a lot. And we'll see. I'm, I'm hopeful. I just won't watch it. It's fine. <laughs> that's fine. I'll just, that's fine. I won't see it. Hi, Roadhouse. First time chat. Hello. That's so exciting. I'm glad that Twitch tells you that now. I don't, I'm just not a fan of the multiverse, you know? Just not really my thing at all. Well, one thing I like about multiverse stuff, and why, why I agree with Darkness Redefined here, I wish they would do multiverse in DC Universe, uh, is because you can have a bad run of movies, like the DC EU has been for the most part. I mean, I still think they're fun, but they're not great, and they're not as good as the MCU. Uh, you can have that bad run of DCEU stuff, but if you're having a uh, a multiverse, you can go and tell separate storylines, you know, and change things up, do something fresh, something new, without it affecting the main storyline, right? So, you know, we have uh, the new Batman uh, that's coming out next year, The Batman, and it's not related to the DCEU. He's not replacing Ben Affleck. Uh, although Ben Affleck is currently not slated to do any more Batman, but they haven't shut the door on it, is my point. Like, they could do Batman movies with Ben Affleck in, in, in that style of Batman, or they can do more Batman movies like they're doing with uh, Pattinson. That uh... or, or they could come up with new superheroes or make it, like, into an actual original character instead of just constantly doing fucking Batman over and over and over. And obviously, I, I would love that. I would love for there to be new opportunities for new characters and, and stuff like that, and, and stuff that people don't have preconceived notions about. But it's really hard to convince casual audiences to go see those movies, right? Like, you know, like they you think about like the movies like Hancock. Did you ever see that, Will Smith? 
Hancock? I did, but I don't remember it. So, I mean, that was a property that existed and, you know, had some fans, but for the most people, they did not know about Hancock before that movie came out. And the movie didn't do great at the box office. It wasn't, it wasn't awful, but, uh, uh, it's hard to convince people to go take a shot on a superhero movie when they don't have any attachment to the superhero. It's kind of, kind of sucks because everyone has preconceived notions about what they want Batman to be, what they want the flash or Iron Man to be for me. Like, you know, and it's tough to go against those. Like when I first watched Iron Man three, I hated it because it didn't treat the Mandarin the way I expected, the way I wanted from my time reading Iron Man comics for the previous you know decade. Uh, but now that I've you know gotten used to the idea that it's separate, it's new. That it that I'm more okay with the way the Mandarin was treated in Iron Man three. Now, now I enjoy that movie a lot more than I used to. But then, why even so. call him the Mandarin? Why don't make him a new character since they changed him so much and it's not the same thing at all? Well, that's what they did in Iron Man three, Jen. They 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 did make it a new character. <laughs> oh well, then why are you complaining about them changing the because Mandarin? Because they because I was expecting the Mandarin and I didn't get the Mandarin. <laughs> what they do to you yep <laughs> so uh but yeah hawkeye i enjoy it i recommend it and, and it's only six episodes so like what's your excuse if you if, if you're at all an mcu fan you have no excuse just watch it how do you feel about that evan and i have been talking a lot about how it seems like television shows are just getting shorter and shorter and shorter it bothers me with a lot of things, but for the MCU, I'm fine with these miniseries because basically it's like, okay, if especially if they're telling stories in a way that's like this, we could have made this a movie, but by making it into a miniseries, we don't have to rush stuff. I'm more okay with that. But, you know, like they're like Eternals should have been a miniseries because that ended up feeling really rushed uh, for me. And if it had been a miniseries, then it probably would have they they could have spent more time on each character, you know, and made a more cohesive story. I think that would have gone better. Uh, Darkness redefined. Iron Man three was trash. I mean, that's how I felt when I first saw it. I I, I thought it was garbage, but uh, I, it really has grown on me a lot since then. That's I like. It's more of like an it's it's like a spy movie, you know. Iron Man. Tony's using gadgets and stuff. Yeah, and you get like like Dark and Street of says you get more out of miniseries. So as far as MCU goes, I'm all about it. I do I, I am a little frustrated when series I love are like ten episodes now, uh, instead of like twenty two or twenty three. But I suppose in some ways it makes it more digestible. You can especially if you're binging stuff, you can move on to the next thing faster. What do you think, Jen? I want to say the last show that I watched that had 20 something episodes, I think it was the flash. That was the last thing that I really, I stopped watching supernatural, which was the other show that I used to watch. I had a ton of episodes a season. Um, but yeah, most Netflix stuff is not that long, but it even seems like a couple years ago. I think what well, game of Thrones was always 10 episodes. 10 episodes. And then now I think wheel of time is only like eight it's they just keep getting like shorter and shorter and now that one's only six i think if you are using the budget like if you're if you're giving each individual episode a higher budget and making a better episode then that's i'm more okay with it so like game of thrones especially in the earlier seasons they were putting a lot of uh money into each episode and it showed each episode was you know the set design was great. Costumes were incredible. You know, lighting was good. And then uh, when they did that last season of Game of Thrones where they started rushing things and cramming everything into, you know, that wasn't good anymore. But uh, if you have a budget for those individual episodes and you have fewer episodes because of that, okay. But, like, you know, The Flash doesn't have much of a budget. So... <laughs> I just think it just depends on the story. Like, there are just some stories that you can't really rush, especially, I didn't see The Eternals, but everybody does say that it's really rushed when you have just that many characters. I, I am also, I know we didn't, weren't planning on talking about this, but I have been watching The Wheel of Time. I'm a couple, like, two or three episodes behind since they come out on Friday. Um, but it there's just so many characters, and I don't really feel like 
you're getting a lot of development and then yeah it's only like eight episodes so i don't know i'm gonna wait i'm gonna wait to finish it to for i haven't read the books so my judgment will be we'll see and they are anticipating Wheel of Time. Like their their intention is to go through like all of the books, right? I don't know. So like know, they want the show to run for a really long time. There are what like fourteen, fourteen books, if not more than that. I think that sounds right. Yeah, and uh, Taylor had mentioned that the first season is not the first book. I believe they don't cover the entire first book in the first season. I think they're yeah. I mean, so the. So how many, they think there's going to be like a 20 season 28, show? 28 seasons. So far, not so much. I would not. Based on the first five or six episodes I've seen, I would not guarantee it being long at all. But I don't know. I guess we'll see. You haven't read the books either, right? Nope. haven't read it and I haven't watched the show yet either. Yeah. Part of me thought I was going to listen to the uh, audiobooks. The audiobooks are terrible. It. Are they bad? Oh, the narrator is horrible. Like, just so boring. I've tried, like, four oh, different times. If, audiobooks, I, like, I fall asleep to audiobooks all the time. If I need a narrator who is engaging. Stephen yeah. Pacey with the First Law series. It's the best. The absolute best. You should definitely listen to that. If you're looking for an audiobook with an awesome narrator. Stephen Pacey, he does voices for all the different characters. There is a character that has a lisp because he's missing some teeth, and he even does that voice, and it's just, he's really great. I respect that. Yeah, he's a really great narrator. Very interesting, very energetic, very... I feel like narrators would be great D&D game masters. Oh, that would be so like the cool. good, Like a good narrator? Because they, they, if they do all those voices, yeah. you know, I bet they're really good at it. <laughs> don't don't even get don't talk about D and D, Jeff. I'm like Does it disappoint you all the time because you miss it so much. I'm craving it so hard, so hard. But need a DM. Just saying. Does your girlfriend like to play D and D? She's played before, uh, but uh, hasn't played much recently. And she's you know she's way too busy. Yeah, I must say she's got general. a crazy schedule, anyways. <laughs> so but hard, I... old Greg Channel, craving it so hard. Yeah. I, mean, I, I still play once a week, so. <laughs> My name's Jeff. I'm so cool. I have friends and a DM, you know. <laughs> we take turns DMing, uh, like, through campaigns. So, you know, it'll be mine eventually. D&D merch. Oh, Jen loves D&D merch. I just love merch. <laughs> she just loves merch. merch. I just love merch. <laughs> it's a problem. I know. I have I have boxes. I literally in my office I have a stack of boxes like this big. I can't lift my arms. I'm very sore. Um, that is just all these boxes. I gotta start doing some unboxing and put them on YouTube and stuff like that. So got a whole bunch of boxes, lots of merch. So uh, the next thing we were going to talk about today uh, is our comic that we uh, read for this episode. Yes. And this is a, there's some controversy around this one. Yes, I, yeah. I pulled up two of the panels. So basically, here, let me pull it up. I was on Twitter. This was in November, so it has kind of taken a while. But, okay, so I was on Twitter, and I was scrolling through, and somebody commented. And this is where it, you know, depends on your, this may be kind of controversial, so hold on to your pants, guys. Somebody said... People are not kidding about X-Men Green. The first new Marvel comic I've read in over a year taught me a valuable lesson. It's totally okay to violently murder convenience store clerks and blue-collar workers for the environment. So then I look, they had linked some pictures, posted some pictures. So here is one of the panels from the book. This is from the X-Men Unlimited Infinity comic exclusively on marvel unlimited yes so that it is a digital only comic and it's pretty cool it's a vertical comic but anyways you just we'll swipe through it on your phone it is actually really convenient to read yeah i, I that's one <laughs> of the things i'm going to talk about for sure but this is the panel so basically she is nature girl she's on the beach she sees a sea turtle and it's dying and she can like commune with animals and it 
coughs up a plastic bag. And on the plastic bag, it says Owen's Grocery. She's like, oh my God, all these litterers with their plastic bags and they're ruining the environment. They're killing the animals. So she goes back to the mainland, walks into the grocery store, obviously very upset. And then she stabs the guy at the register. <laughs> this planet is not your toilet, you stupid barbarian. And she just straight up fucking murders him <laughs> in the store with a pair of scissors because a turtle died by choking on a plastic bag from this store. Right. So, yeah. Okay, so, so I had a lot of thoughts on this. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> Should you... Why don't you do a synopsis first? Like, other than that, is that the whole thing? I mean, I guess, we, like, so... Um... The X Men Unlimited, if, starting from issue one, the uh, the plot is uh, that Hive is kidnapping uh, some you know mutants and everything, and Wolverine goes out to save them, uh, and and you know, and that that was you know that was the first arc, and then it kind of just randomly jumps right into this arc. Well, it's very jarring. It's <laughs> X Men Unlimited um, Infinity, right? Yes, X Men yes. Unlimited Infinity, which is a weird name, anyways. I think but... it's because it's that's what they call Infinity Comics is the brand of comics that they have exclusively on Marvel Unlimited. Oh, okay. Well, then that makes more sense. Infinity is in you just keep scrolling. Yeah, it's Infinity. That's, it's, you know. it's Infinity yeah. until it ends, and then until it ends, yeah. and it ends very quickly. Yeah, they're not long. Yeah, they're not long. Uh, but I guess it's an anthology series, so you get like a six story arc story and then it jumps to like the next story and then it jumps to the next story so oh. it's a um a bunch of just random six issue short stories the, the brief i mean the brief synopsis is basically what jen's already said is that nature girl uh goes off the deep end because humans are killing the planet and they're killing animals and stuff and she and another mutant named curse uh decide that they're just gonna freaking kill everyone <laughs> and charles and magneto uh ask wolverine to go get her back go get go get them back uh because he can track them that's that's his ability you know one of his many many abilities is uh that he can track sorry i'm grabbing a soda <laughs> uh but yeah uh that's the plot you know and my my thoughts on this, and I'm I'm hoping Jen will agree. The writing on in this arc is bad. This is a poorly written comic. <laughs> Am I? Do you agree? It's not exceptionally bad, but it's not like it's to me. It's standard. To me, that was just like a standard basic comic book. I guess I maybe don't expect that much from them anymore, but. I, I don't I don't know. It also kind of seems like a juvenile storyline to me. That's my well. thing. That's why I thought it was bad. Is because it just feels like one. It it feels like the person writing it doesn't remotely have any emotional attachment to the story they're telling. So yeah, it's like Skizzy Snips just says autopilot writing. It is very just like like that whole line. The world is not your toilet, you barbarian. <laughs> That's just bad. It's lazy. It's not good writing. Uh, which is a shame because the art in this is pretty good. It's no, good. Uh, yeah, good I artwork. Did like the art. Each anthology also is a different artist and writer. So the artist for the X Men Green is different than the other ones. But it's really great. I really did enjoy the art. And but a lot of the uh, controversy is you know say this guy saying that like oh Marvel is telling us it's okay to kill people for the environment. And that is not the message. Yeah, so that was my big thing, was when I saw that comment on Twitter, never believe anything you read on the internet. So then I was like, I have to read this myself. I have to make an opinion on whether I believe they are condoning this type of behavior now for the sake of, like, eco-green-friendly Americans or world people, just people in general. 
And they're not. They're, they're not. They're not condoning it. <laughs> yeah, they're like, Wolverine, go stop her. And that's like the whole thing. He's like chasing them to stop yeah. her from doing these things. They're the bad guys. Yeah, and they're the bad guys. <laughs> very obvious that they're the bad guys. And so that's why, like, hearing those comments that you said that that, like, person tweeted that, you know, like, you clearly didn't read the comic. Yeah. And if you did, you stopped right after that moment because yeah. that is not at all the messages that they're they're trying to give with this storyline. Uh, I don't, But that the other side is I don't really think they have a clear idea what the message they wanted this to have is. Yeah, I will because, you know, they do, they are definitely the villains of the story. But, like, the guys working on, like, the oil, not oil rig, but, like, at the, what do you call pipeline. it? Pipeline. The pipeline. You know, they definitely are portrayed as being, like, big evil bloodthirsty dicks are like oh we're gonna kill you and they're like chasing after her to like murder her which i can understand i guess i would have been more of like a oh no it's either me or them like i have to defend myself but they were very aggressive and it definitely did come off but it just i think it's like a very immature way to like have a take on you know eco-friendly you know, it's a very it's a very um, conservative versus liberal type of political agenda type of thing. But it doesn't really pick a side. They're definitely they're, not picking a side. They're definitely not picking a side. Both sides are, are stupid. Terrible. Yeah, just <laughs> yeah. They're it, you're right. Like, what was the point of that? They're not picking a side, and it's not like they're which I'm fine. Don't pick a side. Tell a story. You don't have to pick a side. But the story is not good either. So yeah. it really is like, what was the point? of this the the one thing i will say is you know maybe the point is that everyone is rude because <laughs> everyone in this comic is rude they're like uh, that's what like like you know skezzy snip says well that escalated rather quickly yeah it did and that's because everyone is really rude no one is polite no one's like oh um yeah like even the, the, the guy in the grocery store when she confronts him about this bag He's like, well, yeah, that sounds like the turtle's problem or something yeah. like, like really stupid. Yeah, I guess it's <laughs> stupid for even eating it in the first place. Yeah, yeah. Why, why would you eat a bag, you dumb turtle? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no one would be like that. Even like the shop owner should have been like, oh, my God, no, obviously that's not what I wanted. I didn't throw out that bag. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she literally murders him. And, you know, there's no proof that he's the one that put the bag in the ocean. He just works there. He works there. <laughs> But at the end, she does say something like, yeah, well, I guess I did overreact. So, I mean... Oh, you think? Yeah. So there was a point in the book that she does admit that it was an overreaction. So to say, oh, I guess Marvel is saying it's okay for us just to murder people now just to save the planet. It's like, no, that's not what was happening at all. So I'm really glad that I read it because now I can say, hey, douchebag, you should, like, read because they have like followers and stuff and it's like maybe you should actually read the things before you criticize it and like blast it to your audience that's that's a a recurring issue among comic fandom is people seeking out controversy where there really isn't any uh and blowing things way out of proportion and that's what happened here (laughs) i mean we we agree it wasn't good it's not worth reading yeah be mad about that yeah it was a totally and it's not over i am curious at the end of it you know there is going to be a continuation i'm yeah. kind of curious to see where they go from there if they do eventually i want to know if they're going to eventually pick a side you know so i might i say i might Keep read reading it, it but i don't think i'll actually You're not going to. i'm not actually going to read it <laughs> but i'm curious to see you know if they continue on with the like not picking a side or if they eventually do like What's the opposite? Demonize, undemonize some of the characters. Yeah. What did I write? Anything Give a else? redemption arc to to Nature Girl, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I guess there. I had some more points about how there are many points in the book where the X Men say it is not okay for you to just kill humans. So, again, just the whole comment of, well, I guess they're saying it's okay to do this. It's like, no, the whole point is that it's not okay. That was, um, yeah. oh, okay, but I will say about the comic itself, like you said, it is on Marvel Unlimited, 
and it's a vertical scrolling comic. So it's long and it's like it's usually like a single panel and you just scroll down on your phone. And what I really thought was cool was in the first um, anthology series with Wolverine and the Hive. Trying to he's falling the down the... Yes, there's cool parts where he's like falling down and you just scroll down and it's like this really long tunnel and they utilize that a few times and I thought that was really, really cool. It's, I mean, at least they're doing something unique with that sort of technology. Yeah, it's something that you could only do in this format. Yeah, so that was actually really cool. I did enjoy that. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I will say I'm happy with the with X, the, unlim- the Infinity comic I'm glad that we read this because now I'm like, okay, I want to check out more of this because it does have potential to have some cool things in there. Yeah. Uh, but I was unhappy with this particular arc. The first arc was was, was pretty good. It wasn't okay. incredible or anything, but yeah. it was pretty good. It was okay. And Nightcrawler, <laughs> I'm a fan. I love Nightcrawler. Yeah. And also I love Wolverine's solution to get out of every problem is just cut more. That's me. <laughs> I do that too. Yeah, you know, just... No subtlety. Let's just blast through it. Avenging Unicorn asks, can anyone replace Hugh Jackman as Wolverine in any future X-Men? Can anyone do it well? Maybe. Is it likely that the next person will be as good as Hugh Jackman? No, probably not. <laughs> but he even looks like him. Yeah. I mean, so I don't know how you replace... It just... I don't think you can replace him. I think you just gotta let Wolverine go. But that's me. You know, I just was talking about... Write a new character. Do a different thing. You don't always have to do Batman. Like, Wolverine is over. Let's do a different character, not try to replace him. But that's just me. I'm sure they will replace him. Very soon in in the MCU. <laughs> oh, are they really doing that? They're gonna, there's there's going to be X-Men eventually. Disney owns the rights again. Oh, wow. Well. They've wait already announced Fantastic that. Four. Fantastic Four's coming back. And again? Ugh. Yeah, but this time in the MCU. So they can just ruin Sue Storm for an unbelievable third time. <sighs> it's fine. Yeah. Yeah, that was one know. thing. I guess I am behind on comics. Sigma Bat says, Magneto saying that this needs to be stopped should have been a clue. Because, yeah, she's killing humans. And Magneto is like, you can't do that. So I was like, wait. <laughs> okay, I guess I missed something. Some change of yeah, personality. They have, a, they have an X Men country now, or, or, or a mutant, a mutant country, that Charles and Magneto are running together. Well, isn't it? They mention another planet because the tree character Kakawa or whatever said, "This is my only planet. Like this is the only place that I can live." I think it meant Earth. Yeah, so it's a different planet, not country. Oh, no, I think he meant that the tree is living on Earth, so it's like, this is my planet, or something like that. I don't know, maybe I misunderstood. Well, there's either more countries... Also, I think that tree is, is a mutant. Yes, I think so. <laughs> so, not worth reading, don't bother. And it's not worth the controversy. Controversy's made up. Somebody made Marvel up. Unlimited, on the other hand, definitely worth uh looking into because i've been reading through all the star wars comics i've been buying for the last several years but just putting away because i you know didn't want to take the time to get them out of the bag and you know and put them and through them now i can just you know read through them while i'm on the toilet just like uh, god intended (laughs) (laughs) can you pull it up on a pc uh i haven't tried i don't know i um definitely more of a book in hand kind of person but I didn't hate this vertical style. I think I don't generally like it on the phone because it's so small, but it being purposely made for the small screen, it definitely, and the art looks great. It wasn't like they had to diminish the details in order to make it fit or anything, but it looked just like a normal comic book art. 100%. Well, so that was uh, X-Men Unlimited Infinity. Uh, but that wasn't the only thing you read this uh, since our last show, Jen. Yes. I mentioned earlier, I read a book. I know I, ha- I have I have <laughs> listened, because you can't say you read a book. You actually listen to it on audiobook. That's, I keep having you, you, this debate you, with people. You don't, get to, you don't get to count that? It's okay, Jeff. All right. I want to see what Jeff thinks about this. Let's say we are having a conversation. You ask me, hey, 
did you read Dune? And I said, yeah, I read Dune, but I listened to it on audiobook. And so if you found out, like you didn't read it, you listened to it. Is that something you would argue? If you found out somebody actually listened to a book, not actually physically read it, would do you say that they can or cannot say, oh yeah, I read it? I think it counts as reading a book. And here's my justification for it. When you're a parent, like my, uh, I'm not a parent myself, but my brother and my sister-in-law, I, I've been present when they do this. When it's time for bed, they ask my niece, Caroline, do you want to read a book? Caroline's not the one reading the book. She's listening to them read a book. You still ask, do you want to read a book? So that counts as reading a book. So if I'm listening to someone else read it to me on an audiobook, that's reading a book. I agree. <laughs> I have been called uneducated for having that opinion by someone. So I mean, if you don't know how to read, there might be an argument that you should be educated on how to read. But I know that you know how to read. So <laughs> As the, I proven by the fact I read a book this week. Oh, so you 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 let the haters get to you, and and no. you decided to read this one well, instead of listening to it. <laughs> when I was at C two E two, I had a day. Uh, Tuesday, I was going to go to the Art Institute of Chicago and spend all day at the museum because everybody all week was telling me how absolutely amazing it was, and so I love art museums. And then they were closed on Tuesday, so then I had to find other stuff to do. So I ended up just walking around. And then I went to a bookstore. There was just like a bookstore inside of an art college. And I just was like, hey, there was a sign outside. I was like, oh, let's go in there. And uh, it was a very small little building, but they had, you know, floor to ceiling books of all different kinds and genres and uh, just stuff everywhere. And I actually asked the woman that worked there if she could give me a book recommendation which was really awesome. I was walking around and then I saw on the face out was my favorite, I don't know about my favorite book, but definitely my top three, uh, I Am Legend. One of the best books. Have you read it, Jeff? I have not read it, no. Okay. But I've, I've heard great things about the book as yes. well as the movie. The movie was terrible. Don't watch the movie. It really? is nothing like is the it, fucking book. People in chat, is it actually terrible or is it Jen terrible? <laughs> Look, I'm a big Will Smith fan, okay? But even he can... But I might be biased because it is one of my favorite books and it is literally nothing like the book. I don't even know why they called it I Am Legend. It should not have even been named that. It was nothing the same. So, see? Greg says it's it's bad. bad. It's It's really really bad. bad. (laughs) Yes, it's terrible. (laughs) But the book is amazing. One of my favorite books, and it's not very long. So I was telling her, oh, this, I saw it. I was like, oh, do you recommend any other books? I love Stephen King. I love mystery, thriller. Uh, This is like one of my favorite books. And she went and pulled like 20 books for me. She put me down in a little chair and she was like, here, just read all these and just pick. I recommend all these. And if you need more, I will like go get you more. I'll post on Twitter. I don't, I don't have the bookmark that has the name of the store in it, but it was really great. She was very enthusiastic. She gave me tons of recommendations. And this was one of the recommendations that she gave me. It's called Come Closer by Sarah Graham. It was um, about 200 pages. It's about a woman who slowly becomes possessed. And I won't say any more than that. Like I said, it was only 200 pages, so I can't really give more of a description other than that because it would probably, like, ruin it. But um, it was... It was okay. It was all right. So I did, I did finish it only in a couple of hours. So I did really, I, the reason why I wanted to talk about this, even though I didn't think it was a great book is because I did really enjoy physically reading something that was only like 200 pages. Um, I really enjoy talking about books with other people. And I feel like, you know, a lot of people I know right now are reading Dune or The Wheel of Time. I don't have time for that. And the audiobooks really suck. So I actually, if anybody has any suggestions, post it on Twitter in the comments or anywhere. I'm looking for more short stories that are about 200 pages that are really good. Um, My complaints about this book is that um, it is a little amateurish. I justify that by saying the author is writing 
in a way it's like more like a journal it's not like an actual author is like writing a very sophisticated novel it kind of seemed more like a journal of like the character um it's very subtle like the the possession it is like a very subtle escalation which is fine i really don't mind like the slow burn but there is like so anticlimactic the ending happens and i'm just like oh okay all right and you just think by this woman getting possessed that something you know crazy will happen something crazy would happen but no nothing crazy happens nothing totally out of the ordinary nothing that makes you go like oh my god like she is possessed it was just like she could either be like just a total fucking bitch or she's possessed you know it's like really that's all it really boiled down to so it wasn't a great book but now i am looking for recommendations of books that are around 200 pages that i can do in a couple of hours that are very good interesting I like all kinds of books. I'm I'm really open to any genre as long as it's good. So taking recommendations for sure. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you read it in high school, but uh, The Stranger. That sounds familiar, but I don't think I read it. By Albert Camus. I don't know. Okay, that's my recommendation. Only 123 pages. Okay, I will write that down. I love also <laughs> Death of a Salesman. That's one I read in high school that I absolutely loved. The Stranger. Okay. Right well, you might also find it under L'Etranger because it's actually a French book, so you can read it in English. Well, I won't remember that. So can you spell that? <laughs> it, it's just the it's the Stranger. Just look for The Stranger. You'll find <laughs> it. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I've been on the fence about... Like, I used to buy the physical copies of the Star Wars books. In fact, I have a, all of those on the shelf behind me are the Star Wars books that I've, I've bought in the new Star Wars canon, and I've enjoyed them, but almost all the time I'll start reading the physical because I only read, like, I can't do other things while I'm reading that book, right? Yeah. While as if I'm, pl- if I'm listening to an audiobook, I can be working or I can be, you know, doing other things for, you know, Cleaning the house, whatever you can, you can do all sorts of stuff while you're listening to an audio. So ultimately, I can't. I just end up, I I end up using my Audible credits to get the uh, the audiobook versions of all my Star Wars books anyway. So, (laughs) so I have all these physical books, and I've I've probably only physically read half because I'll listen to the audiobooks for for the other ones. So I I mean, but I've I've been. I'm glad that you enjoyed the experience of actually reading a book again. It's one of those things like that I wish I was more into. Yeah, I guess I that's why I've been enjoying reading comic books recently again, because, you know, it is only a couple of hours and then you actually get like a full story. Whereas the popular things now, like Dune and Wheel of Time, you know, it is like 14 books and they're all so large. And it's, I have really bad ADHD so I can't I used to be able to like work so and stuff while listening to an audiobook but I usually did that with like Stephen King which I feel like is a lot easier to listen to than something like Wheel of Time where it's really complicated world building you don't really have any of that with Stephen King stuff um but I was trying to read the Stormlight Stormlight Archives, and I had that on audiobook, and I hated the narrator, and I couldn't concentrate. But then I actually got the physical book, and then I just sat there, and I actually read it, and I understood it like so much better. I followed it a lot better, but then it just takes so much time. Like, I don't, who has time to sit on a couch and read like a thousand, two hundred million page book? Well, and the answer to that is people who aren't watching movies and television shows all the time, which is, or playing video games. Which is what my problem is. There's only there's only so much time in the day, and you have to decide where what kind of media you're going to spend that on. In the so you know, for me, I've 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 picked my side: movies and television. That's where I live. <laughs> yeah, I guess I think I'm getting tired of TV. I just feel like I haven't really seen anything in a while that really made sitting there for ten hours like worth. I have I just have not been thrilled with any TV show maybe since Mindhunter was really the last thing that I think that I was like wow this is fucking amazing and we're never getting any more of that. Ugh. 
Did you watch any more of the new... Did you watch the new Dexter stuff? No. I'm mad at Dexter. I think out of every show I have ever watched, the last season of Dexter was the single worst thing they have ever done to any TV show ever. I absolutely... Because you were a big fan yes. of that prior to that season. Yes, absolutely. Big fan of Dexter. Uh, there was one season, maybe like three that I didn't love, but it picked back up after that season. But man, the last season, just they just ruined everything. It was so terrible. And so, but now it's, it's after that. Oh no, it's a reboot, right? Right. Yeah. Why? How do you even re like, why? Oh, uh, wait. The same? No, no, it's not a reboot. It's not a reboot. Right. Cause it's still the same guy. Yeah. It's the same guy, yeah. but I don't think it happens after the last season. Oh, I don't, no. I don't know. I haven't seen it. I so. didn't, I didn't watch, I didn't watch the show. Yeah. It's one of those things that, like, I guess I convinced myself that it was going to be, like, a horror thing, so I just didn't watch it. Um, It's not <laughs> scary, but, I mean, it is about a serial killer. Right, so. but it's, so, like, that's one of those things. Like, the same reason I didn't watch Silence of the Lambs until, like, two years ago was the first time I'd ever watched Silence of the Lambs was because I convinced myself that it was a horror movie. And then when I finally watched it, I'm like, oh, no, this is just a crime drama. Yeah. Why did I think this was a horror movie? And yeah. you know why? It's because freaking IMDb categorizes these things uh, under horror. Really? And, like... Yeah, it's not a horror movie. It's not a horror movie at all. They just they always lump thriller and horror together on stuff. Yeah. You know, it's not the same thing. It's not the same thing. Silence of the Lambs is good, though. Silence of the Lambs is great. <laughs> it's one of my favorite movies. I actually watched that, and then I just went on and watched um, the rest of the series, Red Dragon, Hannibal. Series. Hannibal. Yeah, I really liked the Hannibal show as well. I thought that was really good. There's another one that got canceled uh, too soon for a lot of people. Uh... Um. One thing I wanted to mention, because we talked about it on this show, and it's it's still uh, it keeps popping up in my news, probably because we talked about it. But uh, there are people who are campaigning for Cowboy Bebop to come back uh, who? after it was canceled. Who? A bunch of people, like people, are signing like petitions and stuff to get Netflix to bring it back. <laughs> I whenever I saw they canceled it, I was like, "Yep, uh huh, totally get that. All right, not surprised at all." So people really liked it enough that they. Oh, it's what I, it's what I talked about. It's a lot of people who had never watched the anime enjoyed the show. So those people would like more. <sighs> <laughs> or they can just watch the anime. It is also on Netflix, and they can get some real culture. You know what I mean? Thanks for hanging out, Skezzy Snips. Bye, Skezzy. <laughs> See you later. Oh, I did see, I did see a little trailer thing for the Wonder Woman game. And we also had people talking about uh, the new Matrix. I, I'm going to watch that hopefully sometime this weekend. Have you, I, I assume you've seen two and three. Yeah, I, I've watched the original trilogy. I... They, they weren't they they weren't as bad as I was led to believe they would be, but they're definitely not as good as the first one. Well, the first one, <laughs> I, I, you cannot be better than the first one. I think so. I do remember seeing two and three. Um, I remember I remember the first time I watched The Matrix on DVD in my bed, just watching the TV, and I was like, "Wow, this is a." It, I think it might have been the first like adult not like sexual adult but like i knew what you meant <laughs> yeah the first like adult movie that i was like wow this is amazing this is so good i loved loved the matrix and i remember seeing two and three and the only thing that i remember about them was thinking the cgi is just so overdone the bullet time just so overdone they took all the little things that were unique about they the did first it too one, much and they just did it too much and they were that's what they relied on and then i remember the last i don't remember anything about the ending other than i didn't like it but i don't it was just but i don't remember what it was about it's or why spoilers or for the third matrix movie that has been out for you know like well over a decade now yeah but i don't uh, remember don't tell me oh, Maybe no? I'll, maybe I'm considering. I just want to complain about one thing. I just want to complain okay. about one thing. All right. The the bridge sequence at the end of the third movie where like they're in their like mech suits, right? And there's one guy left in the, the on the bridge. And this first of all, the battle on this bridge went on way too long. But th there's a good like ten minutes where he's just standing on the bridge, gun out in front of him, screaming ah like that, right? 
and the sentinels just keep flying directly into the line of the bullets. Spread out, you dumb robots! <laughs> you can't shoot everywhere at once! You're robots! Why, why are you all going straight at the gun? Sorry. <laughs> Jeff is very passionate about this. <laughs> I feel really, I, like, that one scene stuck with me in a very negative way. <laughs> I am, I'm just super curious about the new one. I, I haven't, I honestly haven't heard if it's good or bad. I guess it just came out today, right? So I haven't right, heard yeah. anything about it yet. I'm sure there will be lots of people talking about it after today. But I really do, I was almost about to watch started watching the matrix trilogy again for the show but then i decided to watch die hard 3 instead so i really want to rewatch 2 and 3 because i i want to watch the new one just because i'm super curious out of all the controversy about you know the directors and the story and they brought the original cast back except for Lawrence fishburne right but they got a guy that looks just like him yeah i i mean i just assume it's an age thing at this point yeah so uh, I'm really curious. I don't even know what the new one's about. I have no idea, um, but I'm curious. One of the co-hosts of, of my movie podcast, uh, his name's Hugo. Hugo's a huge Matrix fan, and his prediction going into this weekend was that this is going to be a very polarizing movie, and that there's going to be some people who absolutely love it and other people who think it's just absolutely terrible. And based on the review scores on Rotten Tomatoes, so far he's right. Oh, really? <laughs> there are people. There have been people who really like it, and then. They don't. <laughs> now I have to see it. Now I have to know which side I'm on. I have to pick a side. So I'm going to watch it. Maybe this weekend I'll watch Matrix 2 and 3. More lore for the fans. Yeah, so uh, that, that's one of the things I intend to watch before our next episode. Well, maybe we'll have to talk about it. Maybe. the next show. Usually we, we do decide one thing on the previous show. So you want to just go ahead and say we're going to talk about Let's the Matrix? Let's do it. Matrix All right. Resurrections. All right. Put it on the books. All right. I'm going to watch the trilogy again. I got to get the whole thing. But maybe we'll go <laughs> Matrix Party. Well, like Daniel says, I'm just going to see Spider-Man again. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'll probably go see that again myself. But <laughs> It was fun. I enjoyed Spider-Man. 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 Oh my gosh, okay, so one thing, since we were talking about the Matrix, I did randomly remember the Matrix MMO. I remember that coming out, but that I had never played an MMO before, but I was like, actually my first online thing was The Sims Online, but I didn't I didn't have an internet, so I bought it, and then I didn't have internet, so then I couldn't even play it, so that was really disappointing, but... That happened to me with Fantasy Star Online for yeah. the GameCube. Yeah, <laughs> No internet. What are you going to do? I didn't know it was an, an MMO. I didn't even know those things existed at the time. So then the Matrix one came out, and I'm very upset that I never got to play it. I am just curious, you know, what that was about with the... I don't know anybody that did play it. I have never met a single person that played the Matrix MMO. They must have been out there somewhere, because it, it, it sold pretty well by my recollection. But... I don't remember. I have no idea. Hey, look at that. Old oh. Greg played it. All right. What did you think? Give me a little brief synopsis about what you felt about that. Are you an MMO fan? Do you play a lot? I play a lot of MMOs, so I would be very curious how it compared, especially one that's so so much older that came out. I've always, I've always been baffled by your love of MMOs because it's like it's a game about playing with people, and like that's not something you would like. I. You know what I mean? Like, it's not something you like about other games. Other games that are designed to be played with people, like, you don't get into those. But uh, MMOs, you're all about. Um, I definitely prefer... I like MMOs to play with my friends. I don't, right. like, enjoy going out in the You don't play with the randos? New, I don't... It gives me, like, anxiety to play with strangers. Yeah, that's, that's, I, that's what I would think. Yeah, so... I But I really enjoy, especially MMOs. I'm usually a healer. Evan's usually a tank. Trevor's usually a DPS. So we have, like, the, the Holy Trinity together, so it's easy to get groups. And I love instances. I love the challenge of working with your friends as, like, a dynamic group. And sometimes we would even do instances with only three people instead of five and just see if we could do it just like with great crowd control and like effort and stuff like that. So I really enjoy the challenge. I really enjoy doing challenging things 
co- cooperatively with my yeah. friends and MMOs are all about that. Plus, you know, the fantasy and having the abilities and the world building and all that stuff. So I really like MMOs. Well, so the verdict, uh, we didn't hear from old Greg about what he thought. Maybe he's typing up a big response for what he thought on that, but, uh, Oh, that, there it is. Path of Neo. It was its own separate story as well as a tie into matrix reloaded when it came out. Okay. Uh, I remember playing the GameCube Matrix game, and uh, I really loved the bullet time mechanic. Did a lot of that. <laughs> but outside of that, uh, the game... I... But uh, yeah, so next week we're going to talk... Or ne- not next week, two weeks from now. In right. the new year, what day is that? we are going to talk about Matrix Resurrections. On the 5th. The 5th of January. I never watched Animatrix either. I heard that was you really good. You should watch good. that. I heard that was really parts, good. Parts of it are very good parts of it yeah i'll be i'll be really curious to hear your thoughts on the animatrix oh my gosh so i guess i'm just doing a matrix marathon well obviously i actually (laughs) have been planning on doing a matrix photo shoot for about two years and i have the outfit and everything but my camera is in the shop i am a photographer without a camera until who knows when there was something wrong with my lens, and it needs to be sent off to Nikon to get it repaired. And I don't know how long that's going to take. So I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do. Hopefully it doesn't take that long. But we'll see. Okay, well, I guess that's it for this week, huh? I guess that's it. We talked about everything. If you ask me, that was a good time. <laughs> I like that movie. <laughs> that was one of my favorite things of the year. was good time. Oh, right. Yeah, so there we go. There was one. Definitely a standout for me. Another uh, Robert Pattinson thing. Oh, um, have you seen the movie The King on Netflix? That's the one with uh, Timothy Chalamet? Yeah. Um, I haven't seen it. I fell asleep, so I can't tell you anything about it. But <laughs> I was just wondering if you had seen it. Nope, not yet. All right. Okay, bye. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks so much for hanging out with us, and it was awesome. And please let me know if anybody has any good short story recommendations. Definitely looking for shorter things. It'd be cool to, like, have random stuff, maybe do small book clubs with everybody in the community and just talk about, you know, everybody. it could be easy for everybody to read just, like, a short book, and then we can all talk about it and stuff. So if you have suggestions on good comic arcs as well, oh, you know, yeah, we'd for be sure. open to hear that. Yeah, I mean, uh, we're definitely open to any topics you guys want to talk about. Um, if anybody has, can we just not do MCU? I will, I will read or watch almost anything. Please don't well, that's ask why, me that's what why, I like, think. Since part of the show is we talk about things that we watched independently. Like we, I, you didn't have to watch Hawkeye for me yeah. to talk about Hawkeye. No, it was great. We did a good job. <laughs> you did a good job talking about it. Everybody was very interested in it, and I was happy. I'm happy not that having people were happy it. Uh, yeah yeah and i didn't have to suffer so it was great <laughs> where can people find you on the internet jen you can find me on instagram as jennifer van damsel or you can find me on twitter as jen van damsel i also have some other things that i can't talk about and uh, my website is getting service. yes, my website's <laughs> getting updated. So it'll be more blogs and galleries on my website soon. That's something I am working on for the beginning of next year. And only hams. I, I can say only. I have an only you hams. Only. <laughs> I have only have hams. It's great. I'm gonna be posting new stuff tomorrow. New sets releasing on only hams tomorrow. So it's free. So go check it out. You can see. I don't know if I can say. Never mind. I'm not gonna say it. I don't want to get oh, in trouble. Oh, that's, that's a good tease, though. That's a good tease. <laughs> that whole... Whatever she was about to say, she could have got in trouble for. Yeah. It, so that, that's good. <laughs> You'll like it. Honey baked um, hams. Oh my gosh, that oh would be a... man. So many good photo shoot ideas. <laughs> well, if you, uh, if, uh, if you haven't already, please uh, follow and sub on Twitch here. Uh, for Jennifer, you hear it, Jennifer Van Damsel. And if you would be so kind, I'm also on Twitch, twitch.tv slash goodgamegrizz. I'm also on Twitter at goodgamegrizz. And if you're interested in my opinions on movies, Letterboxd, uh, I write reviews about, uh, short reviews about every movie I watch. Uh, you can 
also on Letterboxd at Good Game Grizz. So, and he does a movie review podcast. Oh, yeah, called Remember the Film. Yes, Remember the Film. Uh, we just did one episode on Sweeney Todd recently, mm -hmm. and we did an episode on uh, uh, Memories of Murder, which is a Bong Joon movie, the guy who did Parasite and Snowpiercer. Uh, a movie from 2003 he did called Memories of Murder. Really great. Jen, you would love it. I'm not even joking. You would love it. I didn't really like Snowpiercer. It has nothing to do with Snowpiercer. It's, it's more like similar. Parasite. Did you watch? Did you watch Parasite? I haven't seen Parasite actually. Okay. Memories of, Memories of Murder is a classic. It's really good. It, it's uh, it's a it's a murder mystery. Uh, you know, a, it's a murder mystery sort of thing. Okay, I like those. And it's about psychological, like like you know, twisted people and stuff like that. Oh, so. I really like those. Very very good. Uh, but yeah, so check us out on there too. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, Thanks for hanging out with us. We'll see you on the internet next, next show. Year. Next show is going to be on the 5th. So we'll come up with some more topics. I will post about it on the internet. And, oh, um, in case you missed any of this or the last episode, I will be uploading them to YouTube. So if you missed the beginning of this or missed the last episode, it's all going to go on YouTube. You can check out our first and second episodes on there already. And um, by the way, if you do check the stuff out on YouTube, check back periodically. I will randomly think of new stuff and I will put it in the com in the description. So for example, like when we talked about last night in Soho, I had some more thoughts on it. So I typed it up in the description. So it's not in the video, but I just have random thoughts about things and you can go back and read it and stuff like that. So. Okay. Well, so until next time, thanks for joining us. Bye guys. Bye, thanks everyone. for hanging out. See you later.